Joe, maybe come out here so they don't kick us out. I don't want them to. Freeland Stewart. <laughs> so what did you think? Very upsetting. Very upsetting. They're playing. They, you know, they clearly seem to have their mind made up about what's what they're going to do. On the other hand, I think they have some desire not to be reversed by the Supreme Court because that'll be bad for them. So it does seem that they're considering the free speech question, but they also try to play the free speech question against the so-called perjury question. But Farringer nicely found, he nicely pointed out that, look, the judge didn't find, Cuddle didn't find on matters of, 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 of perjury as a matter of fact, so you can't use the, you can't, the appellate court can't rely on the, the um, jury's finding of fact, so they have to dismiss. Yeah, they have to, they can't consider the perjury issues because of that. And uh, they immediately changed the subject from the perjury question to the, um, what she said on the courtroom steps issue, and that re re came back to the free speech issue. So I think Ferringer did an amazing job. If what about remorse? I mean, that's, you know, what about that? Why would you be sorry for something that you're not sorry for? Well, that's true. I, I agree. And I, but as a free speech issue, the, the, there's ambiguity. And the, the, the fact of the matter is whether or not we consider those questions of remorse, she has the benefit of the doubt by court precedent, by, by um, legal precedent, that they cannot interpret her statements as showing not remorse if they're ambiguous. So they are stuck by the law to not find what about this. the fact that this whole court may not even have jurisdiction? There's a difference between the United States District Court in all capital letters that's been incorporated with a Dun & Bradstreet number right. as opposed to a constitutional Article Three District Court of the United States. That's a good point. Yeah, I don't know. Have you ever looked into that? No, I, but that's a you very might, good, interesting might, point. Yeah, yeah, you might check out Rod yeah. Class's work because he's talking a lot about them with Quorum Novus. Interesting. That she might be able to file that and just sort of end the whole... Theater. Yeah, it is <laughs> theater. It is a bunch of theater. It, theaters, is, a th it is theater. I Thank agree. You. What's You're your name? Much. I'm Russell Dale. Thank you. Yeah. There we go. We're learning from Rod Class what a is a district court of the United States versus the district court of the United States. Here we are at 500 Pearl Street, where a lot of these big issues are. Never mind. And here's some more. If anybody I must say, many people have come through those doors, and we have come through those doors before, but what we must do is emulate Lynn coming through the doors. She is not bent. She is not broken. She never will be. And we must never be broken. She talks about governments of tyranny. She talks about government of tyranny. And when they asked the question, how did you know about her character, the answer is, look at the 72 years of her life. Look at the last 30 years of her life. Look at her life just before she went into that prison. Look at her life in the prison. That's Lynn Stewart. And we must all emulate Lynn Stewart.
We're not broken. We're not even bent. Because we know through history that Lynn Stewart is and Lynn Stewart was correct. History has absolved her. Even though this court may not. Thank you for coming. Ralph, what about the issue of remorse? Uh, the issue of remorse. Why should she be the issue of remorse? Why should she be remorseful when she was correct? Hasni Mubarak. The object of the Sheikh's voice is on trial for his life. The party of the Sheikh is in control of Egypt. How is this court and this government going to deal with that? That's right. It's dealing with them, right, dealing now. With them right now. Hypocrisy, America, America is thy name. Thank you. Lynn Stewart is one of those rare people. Lynn Stewart is one of those rare people who came to the law. Who came to the law? Not to make money. Not, Not to, to make, make money. money. But for the love of freedom and justice. For the, for the love, love of freedom, freedom and justice. She always fought for her clients to the end. She always fought for her clients to the end. Who understood that the duty of a lawyer. Who understood that the duty of a lawyer. To do everything within her power. To do everything within her power. To bring truth and justice and human service to her clients. To bring truth and justice and human service. Her clients. And Lynn never faltered. And Lynn never faltered. And the law and the courts should praise her. And the law and the courts should praise her. As the highest representation of the role and duty of a lawyer. Of the role and duty of a lawyer. We need a lot more. We need a lot more. We need a lot more. In the defense camp, and I might add, in the, in the defense, defense camp. In the defense camp, and one of the prosecution. And I'll add, we could use one or two in the prosecution, too. <laughs> <laughs> we could use one or two yeah, in the wait, prosecution, wait the day. too. Uh, sisters and brothers. Sisters and brothers. Lynn Stewart and Ramsey Clark. Lynn Stewart and Ramsey Clark. Defended an innocent man. Defended an innocent man. And in the course of so defending that innocent man, put into evidence. Put into evidence the fact that the United States government. Put into evidence the fact the United States government. Through the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Through the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And its operatives. And its operatives. Were the agents of the crime in question. Were the agents of the crime in question. And that is Lynn Stewart's crime. And that is Lynn Stewart's crime. And what is at work here, brothers and sisters? And what is at work here, brothers and sisters? Is the assimilation of an attorney is the assimilation of an attorney to the putative crime of the, of the defendant. To the putative crime of the defendant. Which means when Lynn Stewart appointed by the court which means when Lynn Stewart appointed by the court to defend the mafia hitman You know, I've been talking to people and they're intrigued by the district court versus the, dis the United States district court. Yeah. Yeah. People are starting to pick up on that. And what I did, uh, the, the documents that I got from you, the form of Sonoma, yeah. I started making copies, just handing them out to the other two guys that I was talking about. Uh huh. So my hope is that after you guys get back, we will have the first meeting of at least ten people who are interested in doing something about more. Uh, and 
occupied. Think free Lynn Stewart. Right. But that might help Lynn, that it's in the wrong venue, in jurisdiction. Yeah, well, uh, that's the next thing that they got, that, that they should try. If this don't work, if this court don't free her, then, then we go and try to go into the real Article Three court, the District Court of the United States, not the United States District Court, because the United States District Court is another corporate court, and it's it's corrupt. They're all corrupt. You it's know? a corporation, and that we, the people, pay their salaries for the corporation, and the corporation doesn't have to pay these guys. Right. They are literally on our backs as, as taxpayers, and it has nothing to do with justice. It's a business. No. The, these corporate, not on. the corporate courts are paid by the world government, by the World Bank. It's They're not the people's courts. Right. And now tax dollars go into feeding But our people. tax dollars... We have to study this, the tax dollars. It's a little... Uh, our tax dollars probably built the building yes, that the corporate courts are operating in. Right.